Welcome back to Connected Farmer. Today we have Jerry Gidel. He is from Millane Research and he's going to share his crop estimates with us. Stay tuned. Jerry, how are you today? Very good, Lewis. How are you? I'm doing great. So, what are your crop estimates for both corn and soybeans this year in the U.S.? Well, it ended up, uh, this is always an interesting time when we're looking at uh, corn and soybean estimates. Uh, and then this year, particularly since we're going to run a little bit blinder again than normal over the last 10 years or 15 years uh, since the USDA's has decided not to put out their uh, uh, crop observation populations and things like that. So this August report is always, has always had at least that part of it along with farmer surveys. Well, they're gonna stay with farmer surveys and enhanced uh, uh, satellite information as their reasoning. But personally, uh, I'm kind of really in the 175 area here. Um, it's a number that I think is realistic and that, uh, and it also includes the, the general trend we've had all the way since 2019, or 2000, uh, up to now, that really does uh, keep us on track. I think the one thing that's uh, happened here, uh, after 2012, the uh, USDA decided that the, uh, that yield that year was really an outlier, and it is to some extent. The biggest thing in it is, is the fact that uh, uh, it's still part of the uh, past history, and uh, definitely this year's crop has not been hurt like that uh, by any means. But at the same time, uh, by just ignoring it and not putting it in your data uh, and regression analysis, that, that's how you get a 178 yield. We've never had a yield of 178 and a half bushels. Um, highest we had was 276.4, uh, I think, a couple of years ago. And so uh, to me, that feels a little un. Uh, unnerving to be projecting a trend line yield above the highest yield we've ever had. Uh, you know, that's, this doesn't ring right in, uh, in that. There's still plenty of time out here. I know we've uh, had some recent rains in that on the corn, and that and particularly in the state of Illinois where the things were getting pretty dry. And over the last 10 days, we've had a couple different uh, storms come, uh, storm systems come through, one through St. Louis, Indianapolis, and one from uh, the uh, Quad Cities or, or the Davenport, Rock Island area down towards Champaign. And those are very helpful. But the thing is, we've also got parts of Illinois, parts of uh, Eastern Indiana, Ohio, and a big chunk of uh, West Central Iowa, uh, basically uh, west of Des Moines and, and uh, up towards Sioux City. And uh, that does even go up into, in, up into South Dakota. Those are areas that definitely need rain. Now there's projected rain again this weekend for that western part of Iowa, but we've had projections for there too. So sometimes they don't always pan out. We've had uh, areas where they didn't think we were gonna be much, we got some, and where we didn't, we didn't. Uh, the 175 though, it's a number I think that uh, is realistic at this point. Uh, we still have to fill this corn out. We've got about 60% on pollination last week. We'll probably be, uh, on Monday, we'll probably end up being closer to 80% uh, uh, or so on pollination. And so, uh, but the interesting thing is, is some of that area we talked about in Iowa, uh, it's further along and that's where it's been some of the driest. So uh, how that all fits into the old uh, uh, abacus out here is always interesting in that uh, on the thing. But, uh, you know, we'll see where things go on this thing. Uh, as to where the weather comes through uh, strong or not, uh, or not. Yeah, soybeans, that's, that, that really is to me a kind of a crapshoot this time of year. August is so important uh, for the U.S. Um, uh, yield capabilities and that. I know that certain parts of the Eastern Corn Belt put their beans in earlier than normal, which enhances their opportunity for yields out in the Illinois. I Indiana. heard though, about some uh, weather issues in Ohio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In Eastern Indiana and Ohio, they've missed out. Definitely missed out. So 
that's another feature on that part of the world. Uh, and so the, the soybeans really is the uh, weather in August is the key thing there. Uh, you can have lots of blossoms and look like you're going to have a lot of pods, but they can abort or they might not come to be. So uh, that doesn't mean that I think that we're at, you know, 46 or 47 bushel yield. I think we're, you know, the USDA is right around 49. I think that's a good number. Might be 50, up a half a bushel. But I wouldn't say, oh, God, I know it's 52. Yes. And uh, what do you expect for exports? Well, exports, uh, it's really interesting. We finally have found the, the Chinese to show up here in the last uh, two or three weeks. And in the midst of all this, we also have a uh, building tension between the U.S. and China at the same time. They've uh, been positive about buying new crop. The biggest thing is we've got a lot of old crop out here that's still on the books. And that, and will we even, we've got sales above the USDA projection by 65 million, but at the same time, we're 200 million or more to, to ship out in six weeks. That's a pretty aggressive situation. I kind of feel like we're going to be a little short on old crop, and the new crop estimate uh, uh, out there uh, it is attainable, but uh, we probably need to have a little better uh, uh, political uh, arena to, uh, and guarantee we're going to have something over $2 billion. And it seems uh, there's a shift to Brazil right now. Oh, yeah, the shift is on the corn side now. You, you, you had a good idea about switching over on the corn. We're going to be battling the corn side of things here, too. Uh, Sales on corn uh, are uh, a little behind the total. But they're not too far away. Another same problem, though, is getting the corn shipped out of here to meet the USDA projection, and, that, and the same thing for the coming year. Uh, Brazil and, uh, and Argentina are going to be tough competitors in the corn market, uh, starting for sure in uh, late September and October, when we used to have that all to ourselves. That's, that's when uh, South America is uh, pretty aggressively pushing their supplies. They just got done uh, with their harvest. Uh, well, it's not totally done in uh, Safrina, but it's moving along very nicely. Jerry Gisdell from Midland Research. Do you have something else to add? Oh, but I think the producers out here are kind of trying to figure out why in the world uh, uh, the, the market is not reacting to some of the export sales uh, or the weather. At the same time, the bears are trying to figure out why it's not already down at $3 or down at eight fifty on beans because uh, the crops are so good. Crop conditions are always interesting. They, they're, they're a nice little survey of people driving around looking at crops, but I don't know that that's always the final say in it. So uh, I guess we'll find out more as we get more and more people out there looking at the crops uh, and that uh, going forward. And then of course, with we'll the pro farmer tour in the latter part of, uh, of August is always an interesting one. I heard they're going to be a virtual tour this year. They're not going to have people driving around. They're just going to have people looking in their locality and reporting on what they see, which will be interesting. Uh, it kind of worked surprisingly well for the wheat tour back this last spring, so maybe that will be a, a factor for us. Uh, from there, uh, actually, I'm going to make a trip out myself to Central Illinois the, in two weeks, and uh, so I have my own opinion about what I see out there before the August crop report. We'll be in touch. Thank you, Jerry. You bet. Have a good day, sir.